As mentioned before, we're going to use Eclipse as the IDE to create a web application. To create the web application, we're going to create a new project. Make sure you select Web and Dynamic Web Project from the list. We're going to give a name to a project. You can use any name you want. For my case, I'm going to use example C1. And as this is the first time we create a Java web application with Eclipse IDE, you can check that the target runtime has no selections yet. We're going to create a new runtime for our environment. We're going to select Apache Tomcat version 6. And we're going to browse for the location of our Tomcat. In my case, it's Sandbox. Apache Tomcat. I'm going to click finish. You can check that now Apache Tomcat appears at the runtime where our project is going to be deployed. Now we're going to click on finish. Once the project is created, Eclipse will automatically generate different folders and files that will help us in the development of the project. Before continuing with the project, I'm going to cover some basics about web applications. When you create a web application, these concepts will be very useful and you will find them very often. First of all, you will have a client, which is usually a user with a web browser. For example, Internet Explorer, Mozilla Firefox, or any other web browser. And you will also have a server that will answer the requests you make. Usually the client makes a request to the server, which is processed, and then the server replies with a response to the client. I'm going to show that with an example. When you type google.com and press enter, the browser automatically creates a request object that goes to the server, and the server will get a response for the browser. You can check the actual response viewing the source code of the web page. What we're going to try to do in this tutorial is create our own server using the Tomcat container we just downloaded. We're going to see that we need to do some Java coding and we're going to use some XML configuration files. So let's get started with the first Java application. First of all, we're going to create a new class And we're going to name it test servlet. Put it in any package you want. So in our case, we're going to put it in org.test.webapp. For the superclass, we're going to select the HTTP servlet class. And we're going to create. And we're going to click on finish. Now, we have a class that extends the HTTP servlet class and we can start creating our Java code for web application. There are some methods in the HTTP servlet class which we are going to override in order to create our own functionality. In our case, we are going to override the method doGet. I'm going to delete this. As you can see, the doGet method receives two objects, one of them being the request and one of them being the response. The request contains the information that is sent by the client and the response is where we are going to put the answer from our Earth server to the client. For this tutorial we are going to do a very simple example. We are just going to return the current date to the web browser. Remember that the response object is where we are going to output the information we want. In this case, we are going to put response.getWriter.print and we're going to print the current date. Okay, it's going to show an error because we have to import the class date. Here it is. So, that's what we're going to do here. 
Once we have our Java code, we're going to configure the server in order to let him know how we want him to handle the request. To do this, we're going to open the web.xml file inside the web in folder. The contents this here are automatically created by the Eclipse IDE. What we're going to define here is a new servlet with the class we just created. To do this, we're going to create a servlet tag. We're going to give it a name. We're going to put test. And we're going to tell the server that our servlet is org.test.webapp.test servlet. This is just the servlet class we created previously. After that, we're going to define how our users are going to access that servlet. For this, we're going to create a servlet mapping tag. We're going to tell him that the servlet name is test. Make sure this name is the same as the previously we defined and we're going to define a URL pattern and we're going to tell him the slash test okay that's all for the configuration i'm going to explain to you later what why we did this once we have all this done we have the configuration and we have our servlet class we can execute the code in our server. To execute the code in our server, we're going to show the server view, which is here. We're going to create a new server. We're going to tell him that we have an Apache Tomcat. And we're going to add our web application. As you can see, our server is currently stopped. All we're going to do is execute the server in the, in the book mode. Okay, as you can see, it tells us that the server has startup. If we check the server view, it's going to tell that it's running, it's debugging. What we're going to do is to Place a breakpoint here in order to check that the web application is working. To check that web application is working, we're going to access it. We're going to type localhost colon 8080 slash example 01. This is the name of the project. Slash test. And we will press int. As you can see, it is waiting for a response. If we go back to Eclipse, we're going to check that the project is debugging and that we are currently waiting for this line to execute. We're just going to resume the execution. And if you check back the page, it's going to reply the current date. I'm going to explain a little bit how did we created this URL. We used localhost because the server is on our local machine. We are telling the browser that the port in which our server is running is 8080. That's the default port for Tomcat. We are also telling the web browser that our web application is on the context example 01. By default, Eclipse uses the same project name as the web application context name. And finally, the test word comes because when our web.xml configuration we define it test the URL pattern as the pattern that the user has to type in order to get to the server that we created. That concludes our first tutorial. I hope you have found it useful. See you later.